family stand and just give honor to our wonderful man of God on this Father's Day? Oh, come on. Two claps for our fathers. My goodness. There we go. Thank you all. Happy Father's Day. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning and just worship him. Amen. We are here, we're here for you. We've gathered in this place to honor you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. We're here for you. Oh, lift up your hands. Let your praises rise. Open your heart. Loose the song inside. Oh, let us rejoice and let us magnify his name. His name. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. We've gathered in this place to honor you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. We'll break out in praise and let your shout arise. For our God redeemed us with his mighty power. Well, let's sing together, let us magnify his name. Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. We've gathered in this place to honor you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. To magnify your name, oh, lift up holy praise. We're here for you. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. We've gathered in this place to honor you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here. We're here for you. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. 
strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like
you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Thank you, Jesus.
in the Lord or if you're singing those words, amen, if we're singing out those words, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. We need him first, amen, and then we need one another. It's good to see you this morning. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers, our spiritual dads. We have spiritual dads here, and we are thankful for all of them. And we're thankful for those young men that will be fathers. Amen? We're thankful for that. But we have a strong group of men in this part of the body. A strong group. We're so thankful for each one. It's, it's an honor to serve with you. It's an honor. And we're thankful to God for each one of you. We're going to worship the Lord this morning. Giving is an act of worship. It's an act of obedience. And we want to obey Him. Amen. As followers of Christ, we don't want to just speak things. We want to obey. We want to do that indeed. So as we bring in the tithes and the offerings this morning, uh, we want to honor Him. We want to give praise to Him, our Heavenly Father. So good to be in His presence. Uh, I'm always thankful when we can get come together as a corporate body, but even at home in your, when you're the only one there, he's there. In the midst of whatever you're doing, if you allow him, he will overwhelm you with his presence. He is faithful. He is our provider. More than enough. Always more than enough. And I pray this morning that our giving become kingdom mind giving. That we want to leave a legacy for those behind us. I, I'm one of the older ones in the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It means we got young people. <laughs> but hadn't been that many years ago. I didn't stand and look at that, look at it that quite that way. We've got a lot of good young men here that God is really, really working in. And, and you're blessed when you can see that. When you can see what five or six years has done to Pastor Sean. I remember when he was going to be here three months maybe. <laughs> maybe it's turned into a, a life here not a lifetime, because our lifetime is with Jesus, amen. This is only a stop through. This is only temporary, but we look for much better things. And I don't want to be tied to this world. That song that we're singing, Give Me Jesus, Things of This World Doesn't Matter. God has been stirring in my heart. not get attached to those things. Give it away. Stretch in me. Give it away. Let me prove to you who I am. Father, we love you this morning. We are thankful for our spiritual fathers here that have poured into us, are constantly helping us become stronger men, stronger men in Christ, knowing your word, walking out your word, giving word answers. And God, we worship you this morning in our giving to obey that word that you tell us to do. And God, we just give you thanks for everything this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. No matter what comes, no matter what takes place, I can face it. 
Because, because if God is for me, amen. Well, sounds like I'm going to be able to preach a couple hours today. Everybody is with me. Yeah. Amen already. Before we get started, I want to just say that I want to give honor and thanks to a spiritual father here today by the name of Ray Payne. have all been recipients of his wisdom, his faithfulness, his commitment to the kingdom of God. And we honor him today. If you don't like it that I'm here pastoring, it's Ray Payne's fault. Because he appointed Sarita and I to our very first church. He wouldn't have called me that day. I don't know if I, I don't know what I would have done. I would have probably just continued traveling all over the place. But he bushwhacked me while I was in Florence preaching a revival. And uh, I thank God for him. There's many others that have poured into my life, W.W. W. Webb was one of my first pastors. I praise God for him today. Um, Gary King, who I believe started me on a journey of equipping the saints for the work of the ministry in a new way that I had no clue. And helped raise me up to what I believe God did. If it wasn't for that, I don't believe I would be where I am because... Nobody had really taught me about how to disciple people or how to do things. And I thank the Lord for that, that God gave me uh, at HSU, Holy Spirit University, God gave me an education. And I thank God for that. I'd like all the men to stand, all the fathers in this church today, every father in this place today, stand up, every father in this place today, every father. We thank God for you. Bethesda thanks God for you. We honor you today. We give praise to God for you. You can be seated. I'd like for everyone, I want to do something here. I'd like for everyone of those who consider them my spiritual sons, I'd like for you to stand up, please. I want to speak over your life. I want to declare to you today the promises of God that's for you. I want to declare over you today that now you yourselves are going to begin to walk and become fathers in the Lord. I want to declare to you today that I release you to be everything that God wants you to be, everything that God has called you to be, everything that God expects you to be, I declare it in your life today, that you will be the fathers in the natural to your sons and daughters that God wants you to be. You're not going to be their best friend, you're going to be their father, their dad. I am calling you and declaring over you today that you will rise up in the gifts that God has placed in your life and you will walk in them in the power of God's Spirit that no weapon formed against you will prosper. 
that what he called you to do, you will do. What he declared over you, you will do. What he is speaking over you, you will accomplish. That greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I pray every one of you be filled with the Holy Spirit over and over and over again. I declare to you to be seekers of God and His Word. Looking to Jesus, I declare it over you that you will look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith and that you will rise above you will rise above you will rise above the religiosity of this world and you will walk in faith and be what God's called you to be in Jesus name I speak that over those that were here and those that are not here. Some are already in children's church. Some are already laboring and supporting. Some are in Hawaii today suffering for Jesus. <laughs> some, are at, some are at camp right now suffering for Jesus. I praise the Lord today. Let's all stand and let's, oh, excuse me, wait before you stand, I'm sorry. Um, if you have not signed up for the gifts class today at 4 o'clock, no, sorry, next, su next Sunday at 4 o'clock, <laughs> we were going to do it today, but today's Father's Day, so next Sunday at 4 o'clock, if you have not signed up, please do that. That, that helps you to discover what it is that God is doing in your life and what gifts he's placed in your life. How many of you want to know that? Huh? Don't you want to know? You can't be a servant of God if you don't know what gifts you have. And so please sign up for that if you've had it or maybe you haven't had it in a while or maybe if you're sitting here even though you've went through it and you're going, I don't know what I am. You need to sign up for that class. I don't know why you don't know what you are, but go sign up for that class. And when you leave there, you'll have a better idea of what it is that God's gifted you with. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand up. Let's all go around. Fist bump. High five. Well.
Amen. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. Such a sweet presence in the room this morning. And uh, I believe the Lord is calling us deeper, as we sang a little bit earlier. Calling us deeper, calling us deeper, calling us deeper. And uh, I believe the Lord is asking us this morning, too, what are we giving? What are we giving him this morning? And so as we continue to worship, I would challenge us and encourage us with that. What are we giving him this morning? What are we offering him this morning in our worship? And whatever that is, just give it to him. Respond to the call this morning of the Lord and just give that to him openly in worship. Respond. There's a comfort. There's a peace in the room of his presence. Respond to, to his call this morning. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that barred with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. Should this life bring suffering? What 
Calvary has bought for me, both now and forever. And God, you're so good. Sing it to him this morning. Jesus, we pray, we pray, we pray to the north, we pray to the south, we pray to the east and to the west, we pray, oh breath of God, oh breath of God, breathe out upon people's lives and draw them to you, God, as we lift you up, as we exalt you, if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself, God. We exalt you today because we're blessed, we're healed, we're whole. Hallelujah. 
God, you're great. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Everybody shout amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't you feel blessed today? Yes. We are kings and priests in the kingdom of our God. Yes. We really ought to start acting like. Instead of living below our privileges and allowing the enemy to move us by every wind of doctrine, we really ought to stand for the book. Amen. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. Did you hear that? We're not called just to pour into leaders. We're called to pour into the saints who then God will call and make leaders. Hello? Hello? The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry until we all come to the unity of the faith, unto the fullness of the stature of Christ, unto a mature person. So that we will not be tossed about by every wind of doctrine that is under the hands of people who are cunning and crafty, who have lie and wait to deceive. Paul struck this same note to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. He said to the Galatians, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. All the way back in Paul's day, they had already started preaching a different gospel. All the way back in Paul's day, they had already started preaching a different Jesus. All the way back in Paul's day, they had already began preaching a different Holy Spirit. And, and he goes on in chapter 3 of Galatians, because we know in chapter 1, as we move on down through verse 12, he says to this, if any angel from heaven, that's powerful, isn't it? Or anybody else, meaning anyone among us, or anyone that comes representing us, or speaking uh, to you, that we have spoke to or that just comes out on their own who preaches any other gospel than that that's been preached to you, let them be accursed. Whew, that's, that's powerful, isn't it? And we know that backs up the word because in Revelations at the end of the book, he says, don't let anyone add to or take away from this prophecy. Now, people argue, well, he was specifically talking about revelations, but I want you to know the whole Bible is prophecy. The whole Bible is a prophetic utterance and declaration of who God is and a revelation of Jesus Christ. And so he says, don't let anyone take anything from this book or add to this book. Because if he does, his name will be blotted out of the book of life. And I'll tell you what, that's powerful. We ought to be taking heed to that, shouldn't we? 
He says in chapter 3, he says, he, he even uses some stronger language. He says, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Who's put a spell on you? Who's used witchcraft on you that you would think what you started in the spirit, you could finalize that in the flesh? You see, this false Christianity that we see today, that we denounce, is trying to tell people that they can get to where they need to get to without the Spirit. You hear me? You say, oh, I can't believe they're doing that. Listen, we've got scores and scores of groups out here that preach that the baptism of the Holy Spirit's not for us today. You say, yeah, but... They're more traditional. They, they, they're, they're more this way. We, we have people in, in what used to be spirit-filled movements saying that it's not necessary to speak in tongues. Hello? You say, are you going to be mean today? I'm, I mean, I'm not going to intentionally be mean today, but i tell you what, this is, this is a rough time we're living in. I'm not talking about the world. The world, the Bible tells us the world's always been bad, and it's going to wax worse and worse as we see the time appearing, right? We, we should not be stepping back and saying, whoa, I can't believe that, right? I mean, we shouldn't, we shouldn't not, I mean, we should be disgusted by things. But we shouldn't be sitting back going, I can't believe they're allowing uh, men to go in women's bathrooms. Because they're perverts. I mean, that's what the world is. It's perverted. It's corrupted. It's wicked. Now, we're not supposed to say that because we shouldn't try to run anybody off. But the simple fact of the matter is there is a spirit of perversion and deception that's across this earth why because we are moving into the last of the last moments before he comes the spirit of deception is at hand now the sad part what should surprise us a little bit is that that spirit of deception that spirit of compromise that other gospel that has entered into the church hello until we almost promote some things for the sake of not offending anybody. That's why we don't hear preach strong anymore. How when somebody gives their life to Christ and turns their heart over to Jesus, we, we don't hear preach anymore about them needing to be baptized right away. We let people sit on our pews for a year and not even be baptized. They didn't wait in the Bible. New Testament church. We, we let people sit in our congregations for years without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without challenging them, without giving them the declaration of why it's so important. Hello? Because we have become a church that doesn't want to offend anyone. We, we want to keep our crowds and we want to keep our money. And we want to keep those things going. But I want to tell you something. The Bible tells us that to some, the word is going to be an offense. To others, it's going to be life. But the simple thing is, is that the Bible says that he is the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen? I didn't scare you a while ago, did I, when I said you were with me and kind of alive, that I was going to preach two hours, so you quieted down a little bit? It, because I just want you to know I can preach two hours without you. <laughs> can I, Brother Payne? I was taught by one of the best two-and-a-half-hour preachers I know. Now that I've delegated all the blame to you, I'm going to kick it in here to see if I can't do that. I want to talk to us today, though, about, 
Well, we all know this because we're talking about the kingdom of God, right? It's the kingdom of God versus Christianity. I want you to know this version of Christianity that we see, when you look at the kingdom of God, is way different. This version of, the, of Christianity that we have today it is really, really not flowing with the kingdom of our God. This version of Christianity today, we, we walk around saying things, we have Christianese, and we use language that is contrary to the scriptures. We try to promote things that are really don't flow with what thus saith the word of the Lord. We, we declare things that don't flow with what thus saith the word of the Lord. We back up from things in the scriptures, such as healing and deliverance and things of that nature. We move away from supernatural stances on things and we try to explain it away. We have people that come out and put out posts and things on Facebook and declare things and because they're popular, people try to make it sound like that that's the truth. But I want to tell you something. When you talk about the gifts of the Spirit, there's nothing natural about them. They are supernatural. When you talk about the word of wisdom, you didn't get that by your experience. You got the word of wisdom through the Holy Spirit that baptized you and filled you. The gift of God that operates the gifts of the Spirit through you severally as he wills. So you don't have the word of knowledge because you're educated. Oh man, is he, he must have the word of knowledge because he's got a PhD. No, 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 no. No, no. A, a PhD, that's awesome. That's great. I, I, I'd love to have a PhD, but I'm not going to spend 42 more credit hours to get one. But I, I want you to know, I, I would love to have, that's a great accomplishment, and I'm not knocking that. But I'm just telling you today, what we have in the church... What we have in the church with people who have all these acronyms behind their name, a lot of them are just educa educated idiots because they deny the truth. They try to excuse away the truth because of their traditions. But listen, we, we, we don't mind traditions that don't take away from the Word of God, but we're not guided by our traditions. We're guided by the Scriptures. The book, I, I, I don't care what your opinion is of what I say. There's people in this congregation right here today. You don't agree with me on things. But I don't care about your opinion. If you don't agree with me, stop talking to everybody else. Come and sit down with me and we'll go through the book. Hello? We're going to talk about today his presence. And his voice. When we talk about his presence, we know that the scripture talks about this presence of God. In Exodus 33, 14 through 16, it says, And he says, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said unto him, If your presence goes not with me, carry us up not hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? It is not that thou goest with us, so shall, be, so, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Why is it? Why is it that they know us? Why is it that they fear us? Why is it that they understand who we are? Because you're with us. Not an angel. I've said this before in here, but wouldn't it be awesome if you just had an angel that you could see all the time that was right with you? I mean, that, that's awesome, but I don't want him instead of God's presence. When we talk about presence in the Bible, though, we can, we can categorize it into three different aspects. The first aspect is that God is omnipresent. How many of you know that when we talk about God's presence, we understand, don't we, that God's everywhere? Huh? God's everywhere. God's in my pocket. God's all over the place. There is no place that God is not. Hello? Psalms 139, David explains it like this in verse 6 through 14. He says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? 
If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide me from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. you uh, for you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Woo! That ought to get you juice and flow. He's everywhere. You can't get away from him. He has felt every place at all times. That's why, that's why you can't get away from God. He sees you. He sees me when nobody else is around. Second, there is the manifest presence of God. How many of you like the manifest presence of God? Don't we want to see the manifest? Don't we want to see the manifest presence of God? It's called the Shekinah glory. The word Shekinah is taken from the root word um, Shekin in Hebrew, which means to dwell. While in Greek it is called Shekinah, or Shekinah, which means tabernacle. It speaks of God dwelling in tabernacles or a physical manifestation of God's presence. In Exodus 3, 1 through 5, God made a dramatic appearance to Moses on the mountain in a flaming fire bush that was not consumed. This spoke of God's manifest presence. We see it on the mountain as he comes to speak to the people. As God uh, had told Moses, get all the people, have them gather around the mountain. And then on this certain time of the day, I'm going to come down the mountain and I'm going to speak to them. That was God's manifest presence. How many of you know they weren't interested in that? We can go on. I could go on. There's plenty of times when God's manifested presence was seen and experienced. The third aspect of this presence is in the form of abiding presence of God. God who is in heaven decided that he would live with men. How many of you are glad? And we say then, and we cry out as Jesus was here. How many of you know Jesus was God in the flesh? Very much man, but very much God. He, he laid aside the deity for a period of time that he operated in the Holy Spirit on this earth. But yet when he's coming into uh, Jerusalem, they cry out to him, Hosanna! God is with us. You are Emmanuel. Here God is no longer or an occasional guest or visitor. How many of you, do you realize that? Do you know God does not want to be a guest or just an occasional visitor in our lives? God does not want to just drop in. First John 4 13 says this by this we know by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit he has given to us his spirit but what about this did they not have the spirit of God in the Old Testament were they not believers huh have we not talked about in discipleship the Old Testament saints they were saved, they were believers the same way that we are. No man has ever been saved by the works of the law. Come on. But we believe in a Messiah, his name is Jesus. They believed in a Messiah that was to come, a deliverer that would be born of a virgin, that would dwell among them. God with us would come and one day deliver them. Did they not believe that? That's the only way they were saved. Paul said that our forefathers drank from the same spiritual rock that we drink from. That rock was Christ. No man, no man has ever, Old or New Testament, Old or New Covenant, has ever been saved by the works of doing, doing, doing. But every single person that's ever known God has been saved by faith, not of works. 
lest we would boast in who we are and what we've done. So what's different? Well, in the Old Testament, we see the manifest presence of God. We see the omnipresence of God. We see God, the Holy Spirit. We see the Holy Spirit coming upon people in the Old Testament, don't we? We see visitations from God. We see the angels descending, ascending on people's lives. We see a lot of working of the Holy Spirit. We see at times Samson had the Spirit of God come upon him, did he not? We also saw times because of Samson's life, we also saw times when the Holy Spirit was not on Samson. We see in the New Testament, Jesus was with them. How many of you know Jesus was with men? They had a problem, though, because guess what? How many believe the disciples were believers? It's okay to raise your hand. Don't, I'm just not a trick question. Believe disciples were believers? Huh? I believe they were believers. I believe that they were as saved as anybody here on this earth today that says they're saved. You say, well, Jesus hadn't died yet. Before the foundation of the world, he was crucified. Huh? There was already, already, already had been done in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God. It had already been done. It had already been finished. But he came here in the flesh to bring to us the finality of that. And so they were there, they believed in Jesus, they believed in him, they trusted him. We know that from Matthew 16 when it says, um, whom do men say that I am? Some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're Isaiah. Okay, well you've been with me, who do you say I am? Peter says, you are the Christ. You're the anointed one. You're God in the flesh. Oh man, he says, that's good Peter because you know what? Flesh and blood and people out here, those that even say their father is Abraham, they couldn't have known that. They couldn't have seen that. My father who is in heaven had to reveal that to you. And why did they see it? John's disciples came to Jesus and they said to him, Jesus, are you the one or do we look for another? And Jesus said, go tell John this, the things you have seen and the things you have heard. That's enough. The things that the disciples had seen, the things that the disciples had heard caused them to go from being, belonging, caused them to go from belonging, caused them to go to wanting to become when they said to Jesus, Jesus, teach us to pray. They're wanting to become. Man, I tell you what, I don't know about you guys, but I want to do what Jesus is doing. Yeah, us too. I want to do that too. I want to do all those miracles. And so they said, Jesus, we know you're going off and you're praying. Teach us to pray. Okay, this is how you pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, work through me now, right now on this earth as you would in heaven. But he couldn't be with them all the time. But how many know there were still believers even though he wasn't with them all the time? How many of you know the Spirit of God worked on them and, th and through them even, even though he wasn't with them all the time? Huh? A lot of people ask this question. Well, you know, if tongues is necessary, what about when Jesus breathed on his disciples and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Doesn't say they spoke in tongues because that was just a deposit of what was about to happen in the fullness. Did you hear me? He breathed on them and the Spirit of God was with them and they went out and they did miracles. How many of you know somebody who doesn't even know Jesus could perform a miracle if the Spirit of God moved on them? We know that a jackass prophesied to one of the prophets of God. God does and works on and through whoever he wants to. But yet when you talk about the New Testament church, what made them different was not how they received Christ, not how they received the Messiah, but what made the difference in them is where the Holy Spirit was going to dwell. Jesus says this in, in John 16, 
7 through 16, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is your advantage that I go away. How many of you know they didn't believe that? How many of you know when he said, It's your advantage that I go away? Oh, goody. Could you hurry up and move on? Because we want that advantage. They, they could not fathom what in the world, Jesus, are you talking about? But he's trying to convince them. He's trying to let them know, hold on a second. It's your advantage that I go away because if I do not go away, he's already breathed on them. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How you know some things you can't bear unless the Holy Spirit, presence of God dwelling in you, gives you revelation. Hello? You cannot bear them right now. However, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. John 14, 9 through 18 says this. Jesus said to him, have I been so long with you and yet have you not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I, ne- I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. How did the Father dwell in him? Did Jesus operate on this earth as a man? Hello? Did he? Does it not say Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit? says he was, right? So what did Jesus say to the disciples? Where the Father is, so, where the Father is, so also is the Son. Where the Son is, so also is the Father. Where the Holy Spirit is, there we are as well. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, had access still to the Father. Unless you think that Jesus is quoting and speaking everything from the prior time he was in heaven with the Father. I don't believe that for not one second. I believe every revelation, everything Jesus was speaking, it was because he had a direct line. He had direct access to the Father. And he said it to us. He said it to us. He said, I don't do anything unless I see the Father do it. I don't say anything unless I hear the Father say it. When was he hearing it? Was it prior to his birth? No. It was right then, right there. Why? Because the governor, the power of the Holy Spirit was in him, taking him up and down, in and out of the heavenly places. He was still walking in the kingdom of heaven while he was on this earth, bringing and reestablishing the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Most assuredly, he goes on, he says, most assuredly, I say to you, verse 12, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father and whatever You ask in my name, that I will do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Isn't that what he said? Why do we, I'm going to talk about this in a minute more, but if that's, do we, how many of you believe that? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Do we believe it? I mean, I know we passively are believing it, yes. But do we believe it? Because how we speak and how we act speaks the opposite. Jesus said, where two or three is agree, agree, touching anything, it shall be done. That's what the word says. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you. Did you hear me? He breathed, and he dwells with you. He said he dwells with you, and will be future tense in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. I, I want to declare to you today, I know it's not going to be popular, but I'm going to declare to you today that people who live without the baptism of the Holy Spirit are living just like Old Testament believers. Holy Spirit comes on them, Holy Spirit moves sometimes through them, but he is not dwelling there. He has not taken up his residence. They have the Spirit of Christ that's working in them. That seed of God's been planted in their life if they've been born again. He's working in them, but as far as the dwelling of God's presence, God's constant filling of their lives is not theirs. And they are walking around, as Samson did, with sometimes he's on them, moving, sometimes he's not. Exactly like the New Testament saints were operating until when Jesus said to them, he's on you, but it's not going to be long till he's going to be in you. If you today, if the church today doesn't get back to the place to where we are preaching the whole gospel, we are causing people in this life to stumble and live below their privileges. But I am declaring to you and the church out there, and I don't care who I declare it to, but I'm speaking it today. If you are here and you've been born again, right now you need to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to come and fill you with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. Had somebody ask me, Pastor Jerry, how do I know that the Holy Spirit has taken up residence? Because when he does, he speaks. This morning, when I give the invitation, if you have not had the baptism, I declare it for you today. Come and receive. If we lay our hands on you, and we pray on you, and the Holy Spirit stirs, and the Holy Spirit, you feel and sense him, and you feel chill bumps, and you have stammering lips, but you don't have the tongue you did not receive. You might come back later on in your bedroom, at your table, in your car, and you might speak in tongues on that day. That's the day you receive the Holy Spirit. Let's don't water down trying to make people feel better by declaring to them something that's not right. Hello? When he comes, he speaks. When he dwells in, he speaks. They asked Peter, the Jews did, Peter, you send us right here, man. You're declaring to us that the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. How did you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you? Well, I got wind of it four or five days later that somebody spoke in tongues down the road. No, he said, we know, we know the Holy Spirit indwelled them, filled them, moved into their lives and made his residence in them because we heard them speak. In other tongues. Yes, Jesus. We heard them speak. We want to try to be careful today when we talk about this because God forbid we offend someone. But do you know we have all kinds of people that if you talk to them and ask them about them receiving, do you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes. Oh, really? Praise the Lord. So you've spoken in tongues. Oh, no. And you want to know why they believe that? Because of wishy-washy believers who won't preach the truth. That's why they believe that. Not because they have scripture. Not because they have any doctrine. Not because they have any theology. But they preach that because they don't want to say to that person, well, listen, okay, thank the Lord that the Holy Spirit has moved on you. But until he speaks. The baptism of the Holy Spirit hasn't come. We want to say, I want the presence of God. 
in my life 24 7 jesus said to them go tarry in jerusalem because i want you to know something that's when the holy spirit is going to come from the father and he's not going to just be on you anymore he's going to be in you and you will walk 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 seven days a week 24 hours a day 365 days a year with the presence of god on your lives in your lives overflowing in you out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water what was he speaking of he says he was speaking of the holy spirit who had not yet been given we should not apologize for what people need in their lives well people just believe different i know they do that's why we have umpteen thousand denominations but all of us ought to be willing to sit down and and agree that we will we will walk out of there agreeing even if it's contrary to what we're thinking at the time we will walk out of there with what thus saith the book huh communities Community churches, Baptist churches, Methodist churches, Lutheran churches, Catholic churches, spirit-filled churches. All of us need to stop our foolishness and get down to the book and preach what the book says. Huh? Stop going around. Stop going around and blessing people when they're not doing right. We have people all the time come to us, hey, brother, would you please pray for my finances. Uh, I'll pray for your finances that God will bless you as your faithful steward. Huh? Do you know I can pray for your finances all day long, but until you're faithful with that, I'm not praying against God. Until you're a faithful steward, until you are faithful tithes and offerings, until you do that, I'm not praying against the Lord because the Bible says anybody that doesn't do that is a robber. I didn't say that. And the Lord even commended the scribes and Pharisees for doing it. But don't leave these other matters undone. Do those too. But we want to bless people. We want to, we want to look like we're compassionate. And we want to look like we're tender. And so when people are out here doing everything under the sun and living any old way, we go to them, oh, bless your heart. We, we try to take their sides. When they don't need you to take their side, they need you to tell them the truth. You need to love them by telling them the truth. God's judgment is even a sign of his love. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like the chastening of the Lord. Anybody in here going, whoa, put me in the line for the chastening of the Lord. Get me in the line where God's got the switch out. I, I can't. Come on, God, give me seven. I want the line where he, he's got his saw out and he's sawing off the rough edges. Come on, I'm lining up. No, I, 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 don't, I don't line up for it. But I know that the Bible says that whom he loves, he chastens. Well, I want to tell you what. If we knew the word, if we were hearing God's voice, we wouldn't try to make an excuse to somebody and enable them to continue to act the way they act. The Bible says when you see your brother in a fault, go to him and tell him. It doesn't say to go to him and say, you know what, brother, I understand right where you are. Every single one of us fall short. Every single one of us fails. Oh, we know that's true. Don't we? Anybody in here perfect? We know that's not what he's talking about. But he sure doesn't want us going to him with all that soft soap stuff. He wants us to go to him and say, yes, God's grace is sufficient. The grace of God covers a multitude of sins. But here's what Jesus said to the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Where's your accuser? Is there no one here? Go. 
In other words, I'm, 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 I'm on your side. I'm blessing you. I, I, I'm just praying for you. And I'm saying, now, go on out there and continue to do what you were doing. How many of you know that we talk about God's presence? Do we want God's presence? I say, if you want God's abiding presence, if you want his dwelling presence, if you want his presence that's with you everywhere and, and he knows everything there is to know about you, if you want the Trinity to be living inside of your life, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. How many want to hear his voice? Huh? You want to hear his voice? Oh, surely, surely, surely. If I have his presence, I'll hear his voice. Huh? Well, I guess yes and no. I'll hear his voice as long as I'm walking in the Spirit. And I won't hear his voice if I'm not, except for repentance. Amos 8, 11 through 12 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, of God, Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, and not a famine of bread, not nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They're going to wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. I want you to know that in this manner here, Pentecostal and charismatic Christians have done more harm to this than anybody else. Because we have leaned more toward supernatural revelation and from what we hear from what we say is the spirit than we do in his word and we call it super spiritualism or that's what we think that it is i'm more spiritual than you because i heard the lord well i, I want you to know so and how many of you know we pray as christians how many of you, how many of you will confess this is some of what you do I'm just praying so I can speak out the will of God. Oh, nobody prays that? Don't we? I just, I'm praying that I would know God's will. Because I'm saying it that way, nobody wants to raise their hand. Huh? Because you probably know what's coming next. Don't you? How many of you got a Bible? How many of you got a Bible? You got a Bible? Oh, on your phone, on the hand. You got a Bible? Lift it up. See that Bible? Here, let me see. See that Bible? Look at this Bible. You know what? You know what? This is the will of God. Did you hear me? This is the will of God. You know why you do not know the will of God? Because you do not know the will of God. You do not know the will of God because you do not know the book. Because if you knew the book, you would know the will of God. If you knew the book, you wouldn't walk around going, Father, if it's your will today, if it's your will, God, heal Pastor Dan. Well, hold on a second. Do you know how ignorant that makes us look? Now, we've all done it, so I'm preaching to JWT, so just so you know, I'm not smacking all you in the face. I'm preaching to me. It's just a simple fact. Do you know how ignorant that makes us look? Because he already says, healing is the children's bread. He already said, by his stripes, you are, you were healed. And so when I walk up and Pastor Doug says, I, I, I got something going on, I need healing. I should just be saying, I declare you healed by the authority and the word of God. And walk off and let God do what he's going to do. I don't have to pray, is it your will, God? I believe it is God's will to heal. Now, sometimes Jesus did not heal, he says, in one place because of their doubt and unbelief. Well, if you're sitting there doubting, don't be asking us to pray for your healing. Ask us to pray for your doubt. But so many times we're walking around and we're saying to others and ourselves, man, oh man, I just got to know the will of God. Listen, I know what the will of God is. It's the book. Now I need to pray and ask God sometimes to help me. God, give me a revelation of what your will is saying.
2 Peter 1, 19-21 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. You know people today in the spirit-filled church and charismatic church put more uh, faith in prophetic words that's given to them than they do the word of God? Huh? They go around seeking a word from the Lord. How many of you know we believe in words? We believe in prophecy. We believe in the gifts of spirit. Not saying that. Not saying you ought to say, oh, well, huh. I don't need that. I got the word. But the simple fact of the matter is we have a more sure word of prophecy than me speaking over you. We have a more sure word of prophecy than me coming to you and saying, thus saith the Lord, which you really ought not do because you only know in part and you only prophesy in part. You can't hardly say that because you don't know every part of it. In the Old Testament, the prophets were the voice and were the mouthpiece and wrote the word. That's not us today. There are no prophets today like the Old Testament prophets. They were until John. But now you and I have the spirit of prophecy working in us. And we can declare, I believe the Lord is speaking this. But just so you only know, don't go out and sell your house and sell all your goods and move to Africa because I said, I see I see the African continent for you. You better wait until you get some confirmation. Whereunto this prophecy, this sure word, whereunto you do well, if you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place unto the day dawn, and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of what? Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen? The word of God is important. Do we want the spirit of the Lord to move? Do we want the gifts of the spirit to move? Somebody said, well, I'm a spirit person. Well, praise the Lord, but I'll tell you what, if you're a spirit person and you're not a word person, you're in trouble. And you're dangerous. You're dangerous to the body of Christ. And in here, in here, we don't tolerate that kind of stuff. You need to know the word of God so that you don't speak something over somebody that's not according to what his word says that's why the scripture says let the prophet speak let the prophet speak two at the most by three and let the others judge well what am i judging by i'll tell you what i'm judging by i'm judging by what the word of the lord says in the book right why because he says the word of god in Psalms 119, 105, he said, The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. 2 Timothy 3, 16, It is a sure foundation that we can build our, what? Our lives upon. He didn't say that you would build your lives on the spirit of prophecy. He said you would build your lives on the word of the Lord. People today are in a famine of not wine or bread. They're in a famine of hearing truly the word of the Lord. They can take somebody coming up to them and saying, Thus saith the Lord, I see this, that, and the other, and glory be to God, it's going to rain on you. Woo! But they can't take it. They can't take it, though, if you come up to them in that same prophetic voice and say, Bro, I got to talk to you for a minute. Look, look, here's what the Lord wants to speak to you. You can't be double-minded. A double-minded man's unstable in all of his ways. I don't care how many prophetic words you get. You better pay attention to what thus saith the word of the Lord. I don't care what some prophet's declaring over you. He can declare over you grand and glorious things. But what you need to take heed to is not some grand and glorious prophet who doesn't have much accountability. You need to de declare what thus saith the word of the Lord. This is what's going to guide my life, not prophecy. And when somebody prophesies, it should confirm already what the word is speaking to me. Come on. And if it does not, I submit that word to my elders, to those that are over me, and I have them pray for that, and I wait for confirmation from the Lord. 
I believe God is moving and raising up the prophetic movement in this church. I believe he has turned the hearts of the sons to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the sons. And oh yeah, by the way, I meant to declare this over those who felt like that I was your spiritual father and you stood up and I was declaring over you. I wanted to declare one more thing that I forgot. Make me a grandfather. Stop playing around and twilling your thumbs. You got all this equipment and you sit around on your hands. Get up! Get up in the name of Jesus and go out here and grab a hold of somebody else and make me a grandpa. All the guys. All the women. Amen! We are neglecting, we are neglecting the word of the Lord, the voice of God. We're having a famine in the land because we're not listening and we're not hearing the word of the Lord. Whether it's me speaking it up here or whether it's the Lord in your closet, in your devotional life, in your quiet time speaking it to you. We're not heeding to the word of the Lord. We're neglecting the very thing that has the power to change our lives. The word of God has the power to convict us of sin and teach us truth and lead us into righteousness. It is is alive. It's not some just stale book. It is alive, and the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12 that it's sharper and more powerful than any two-edged sword. Able to convict us of sin, listen, and dispel our self-deception. Did you hear me? Write it down. Make a note. It's powerful enough to convict us of sin and then to dispel our self-deception because when we think that just because we go to church or just because somebody prophesies over us that we're good, we need to dispel that self-deception because if our lives aren't lining up with the book prophecy is conditional did you hear me the bible is not conditional what the bible says will happen not one dot of the i is going to disappear not one cross of the t until all have been fulfilled the scripture says the grass fades the flower or the grass withers the flower fades but my word will endure forever Don't cast aside the word. The word is there to transform you, to change you. And the only way that we're going to be able to walk this out, the only way we're going to be spirit-filled, the only way we're going to be able to do the things that God wants us to do is we are going to have to make sure that we understand that this word of God is like a map for us. It provides guidance and direction. And the only way we're going to get there is to hide the word in our Hearts. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. How many of you want God to work mightily in you? It's time to stop being just hearers of the word. It's time to start being doers of the word. Did you hear me? It's time to stop sitting on your hands and singing kumbaya. It's time for us to stop playing foolish games in which we know why we're stumbling. Everybody in here knows why you're stumbling. Everybody in here knows why you've got drama out the gazoo. Everybody in here knows why you're falling short of the glory of God. Because we are sinning and disobeying the things of God and not allowing the word of God to sanctify us. We can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. Luke 11.28, he replied, blessed rather, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. 
John 17, 17, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is true. Isaiah 40 and 8, the grass withers, the flower fades, as I said well ago, but the word of God will stand forever. Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Psalms 119, 11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Colossians 3, 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another. Listen, in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, spiritual psalms with thankfulness in the hearts of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And if you do, you will teach others, and you will admonish one another. Come on. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living, jacked and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit, joint to marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. James 1, 21, 22, therefore get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent, humbly accept the word planted in, hold it, hold it. Who's he talking to here? Huh? Who's he talking to? He's talking to the church. He's talking to me here. Get rid of all your moral filth. <gasps> but God, I've been a Christian since 1978. Come on. I don't care, Jerry Westerfield. Get rid of all your moral filth. Sometimes you open a crack and the enemy gets in there. And some things that's still down inside you that hadn't got out yet, it creeps up. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, God's not going to come and just deliver you of everything. That's another fallacy the church is preaching to everybody. Oh, come on, folks. Come on. Lift your hands and worship and God will come and he will deliver you from everything. No, I'll tell you what happens in the midst of spirit-filled worship. I'll tell you what happens in the midst of spirit-filled worship and spirit-filled truth. What takes place is the Holy Spirit brings something up within you that's ugly and nasty and cancerous and can cause you some real trouble. And then you know what God expects you to do? He expects you in the power of the Spirit to take a hold of that and lay that out. And give it up and lay it down and say, God, cleanse me of this. Not, not sit there and go, oh, if the Lord really wants to, he'll deliver me from that. You're being deceived. You're being deceived. Get rid of all your moral filth and evil. You mean sometimes I'm evil? Man, that's tough, huh? Sometimes we're nasty. You say, man, Pastor Jerry, you're hard. No, look, I'm telling all this stuff. It's the truth. It's to wake us up. But also know this, the Holy Spirit can help us to be delivered. He says, moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. It's prevalent. It's not like we're going around going like David did. Oh, God. If there be any evil way in me. You guys remember that prayer? <laughs> okay. I just looked over the balcony and saw Bathsheba. And immediately. Now there wasn't no evil in me or anything that I know of. But immediately I started plotting a way to get her into my house. And in my bed. And in my life. And then God, you know, I did it. <laughs> they went and got her, and she came, and I'm the king, and she did what I wanted to, and I got her in my bed, and guess what, God? She got pregnant. <laughs> but God, search me and see if there's any evil way in me. Hold on a minute, God. She's pregnant. Uh, hey, look, her, uh, her husband's come. Hey, man, glad you're here. Get you something to eat. Because we're going to have to send you back. But while you're here, you might as well go ahead and lay with your wife. God, if there be any evil way in me like deception. Oh no, king. Oh no, king. My men are out there and they, they don't have their wives. I, 
I can't do that. I'm not going to take any comfort. I'm not going I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take any pleasure. I'm going to wait. <clears throat> Praise God. What am I going to do now? <gasps> I know what I'll do. Hey, listen here. Take this to the commander on the front line. Hey, when he gets back there, have him go all the way to the front, lead the battle, and when he gets out there and they start to attack, everybody just draw back. God, there's not any evil way in me. Search me, Lord. How many of you know that I, you don't have to stand here and go, God, if there's anything in me? Do you not know we have spiritual poverty still? How many of you are desiring God to get you closer and closer and closer, but you got to get rid of that spiritual poverty as the Holy Spirit brings up the blackness in our lives? We're not perfected yet. If we were, we wouldn't have to make ourselves ready, but we know we're not ready. The Word of God's been planted in us, which can, he says, that Word of God can be planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the words and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Oh man, I wish I did have another hour. When we meditate on God's word, we are transformed by its power, Romans 12, 2. We become more like Christ and are better equipped to serve him. He tells us to go out and impart these words that aren't taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truth to those who are spiritual. 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved, a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed, rightly dividing and handling the word of truth. Romans 10.17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Aren't you thankful today? Aren't you thankful today that you have the truth? Aren't you thankful that you have the truth of God? And not just man's tradition. Hello? A lot of people today, he says that in the last days, people are going to uh, desire teachers that will itch their ears, tickle their ears, make them feel good. Make them feel good about themselves and where they are. Hello? Oh, oh. I'm not here to make you feel good about where you are. I want to make you feel good about where you can go, where you can get to, what God can do for you. This isn't a feel good. This isn't about feeling good. This is about having the Holy Spirit convict us that draws us closer to the things of God, that we would have a desire to move forward, to go deeper and climb higher heights. That we would listen to the Holy Spirit that doesn't want us to wander around and, and look for truth, feeling after God so that we happily might find him. God says, no, he's not far from you. Why is he not far from you? He is in you. I don't have to wander in the dark. He's right here with me. In this place. Hopefully in this life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in the power and presence of God. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. Stop asking for God to do things that you already know He has commanded us to do. We don't have to pray to pray. We don't have to pray to fast. We don't have to pray about healing the sick. We don't have to pray about raising the dead. He's already told us to do it. He doesn't want me to come along and say, okay, God, if it be your will, he just wants me to declare what's already ours, heal me. But we're not experiencing it the way we want to, because we are not walking in the kingdom of our God, declaring his word above everything else, holding fast to what the truth of God says, and holding fast to what he's already commanded us to do.
God, God, I don't have to pray, God, I'm going to go out today. If you will, use me today. No, 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 no. God wants you to go out already walking in the Spirit. And as you go, well, God, you know what I think I'm feeling and sensing? I'm going to turn down here on this road to the left. If that's not what God wants you to do, He'll have you go straight or turn to the right if you're really hearing Him. Don't, don't get into this spiritual, super spiritualized thing of, oh, today before I go out, God, do you want me to part my hair on this side? Or do you want me to part my hair on this side? My hair parts on its own. Huh? Just go out in the Spirit. And whatever God wants to do, He will do if you'll listen to Him. He'll, he, you know, Pastor Doug Spainhauer and I were talking the other day, and we were, we were sharing, of course, we do this sometimes till 1 o'clock in the morning. But we were, we were talking, and, and I thought it was good because I, I always thought to myself, what would the disciples do while they're here? And I said, oh, if they, were, if they were in a crowd, they would just automatically get up and start declaring the word of the Lord. Hmm? That's what you would think, right? But do you know you don't, you don't, you don't ever see that? In the scriptures, they, they didn't come out there. And because they had a crowd, they start saying, hey, thus saith the Lord. But you know what they were doing? They were walking along in the spirit. Paul believed God wanted him to go to Athens. He had a call, go to Athens. He's going to Athens, walking along. Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. I worship you, God. Hallelujah. And he comes along to this gravestone. He didn't plant no gravestones. He came to the gravestone. And, and, and he didn't just walk up there. He looked and he saw them all preaching to their God. Hello? And then he, he, he didn't even start because of that, but as he's looking over at all these guys preaching to God, he noticed one that didn't have anybody preaching at it. They had a marker called the unknown God. Then what did he do? He went to that marker. Why? Because an opportunity was created by God for him. I'm going to tell you what. You try to create something that's not God, guess what won't happen? It won't, nothing will happen. But man, when you allow God to create the app opportunities yourself, Peter did not come out of the upper room and just start speaking. He came out of the upper room and he spoke out of what was being spoken. Go look at it. They're crying out, hey, these men are just drunk on wine. Peter goes, cha-ching opportunity and he preaches the word i tell you what let's let's get in the presence of god let's let the holy spirit dwell in us let's be filled and let's hear his voice let's walk let's look at the word of god and follow the word of god to the very best of our ability let's don't be double-minded let's focus our attention on jesus the author and finisher of our faith stand with me today the author and finisher of our faith Is that who he is to you? Is that who you're allowing him to be? The author and finisher of your faith? Is that? Are you allowing yourself to be filled, filled, filled with the Holy Spirit? Not just in 1978, but on and on and on and on and on and on. Drawing you deeper and closer to him. Doing in you what you cannot do in yourself. Are we listening to him because his spirit is with us? That we walk underneath, we say we walk underneath an open heaven. You know why the open heaven is for us? Is because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And we have nothing to keep us from Him except ourselves. What is God saying and speaking to you in your spirit? When the word of God is being spoken, what does God say to you? 
when the Holy Spirit is moving and touching your life, what are you ready to do? What are you ready to say? The Holy Spirit here in this place this morning is touching hearts and lives. What are we going to do with it? What are you going to do with the truth? We have to all answer that question. What are we going to do with the truth? What are you going to do with the truth? This morning, I invite us all to come to lift up our hands unto the Lord. If you do not know Christ as your personal Savior, then we would be glad to pray for you so that you would leave here following him. If you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is a time for you to come forward right now, right now. This is a time for you to come forward. This is a time for you to be filled. I declare that people can be filled today, right now, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Right now, in this place, no matter what you're going through, God is more than enough. It is His will. It is His will and His way. So right now, whatever the situation is for you in your life, step out. Come forward. Say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Lord, I totally surrender. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I surrender. You are God, my hope and my refuge. You're my strength. I look to you, God, because you're the one that's more than enough. This morning, what is it that you want to speak and confess to the Lord? about your own life? Do you want to say to him, God, I have in a lot of ways believed another gospel? Do you want to say to him, God, in a lot of ways I've believed another Jesus? Do you want to say to him, God, in a lot of ways I've believed in another Holy Spirit? I do not want to be foolish, God. I do not want to be deceived. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I surrender all. To follow your will and your way. To follow your word. To declare your word, O oh God. To study your word. To know your word be led by your spirit is that you is that you or do you feel like you've got all that down is that you this morning is that how you're training and teaching your disciples your kids your spouse is that the desire of your heart Less controlled by me, God, and more by you. Are you just kind of going with the flow? The flow, going with the flow, will always lead you into bad paths. The only flow we need to go with is the Holy Spirit's flow. How about it? Is that you today? Is that where you believe you are? Is that where you see yourself? If not, step out. Come and let Jesus do a work in you. I'd rather be Come and let him work. No Come place and let him move. I'd rather be No place I'd rather be and here in your love, here in your love, no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my 
my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God, to set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Then here in your love, here in your love, no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Then here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. Oh, I want more. 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 I want more, God. So pour it out. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my so soul that I can't contain, that I can't Jesus control. I want more of you, God. So I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. We want more of you. More, we want more. We want more. We want more. We want more. We want more, God. So pour it out. So 
so pour it out. I want more. 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 God, so pour it out. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would As rather be than here in your we love, here in your in love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire Hallelujah. down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Hallelujah. I want more. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more of you. So pour it out. I want more, 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 I want more of you. So pour it out. I want more. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more of you. So pour it out. I want more, 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 I want more of you. So pour it out. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul. That I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh. So come away with me, come away with me, it's never too late, it's not too late, it's not too late for you. Cause I have a plan for you, 
Yes, I have a plan for you. It's going to be wild. It's going to be great. It's going to be full of me. So come away with me. Come away with me. It's never too late. It's not too late. It's not too late for you. So come away with me. Come away with me. It's never too late. It's not too late. It's not too late for you. So come away with me, come away with me, it's never too late, it's not too late, it's not too late for you. Oh, I have a plan for you. Yes, I have a plan for you. It's going to be wild. It's going to be great. It's going to be full of me. Oh, I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. It's going to be wild. It's going to be great. It's going to be full of me. So open up your heart and let me in. Mm. So open up your heart and let me in. So open up your heart. Come away with me, come away with me, it's never too late, it's not too late, it's not too late for you.
It's not too late. It's not too late for you. Oh, I have a plan for you. I have a plan, yes, for you. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. 